Midway, we meet again so soon. This is WWF WrestleMania, the third PlayStation port of a Midway arcade game we've covered in this series so far, following up on NBA Jam Tournament Edition and Mortal Kombat 3. WrestleMania and MK3 were developed concurrently at Midway in 1995, and they shared some of the same development staff. Both games also highlight the differences in Midway's and Acclaim's porting philosophies, and we're going to see where the PlayStation version of WrestleMania takes a beating in comparison to Midway's nearly flawless adaptation of Mortal Kombat 3. Released in arcades in 1995, WrestleMania is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game that has a semi-isometric perspective similar to beat-em-ups. You're free to move around the ring in eight directions, and each player has four attack buttons, two punches and two kicks in addition to a block button. Though it's conceptually similar to the one-on-one -on -one fighting games that dominated arcades at the time, WrestleMania feels distinct thanks to its grappling mechanics. To grab an opponent, you have to enter a universal button command. That's forward, forward, strong punch. From there, you can start a dial -a combo if your super meter is full, or you can pull off one of your wrestler's signature moves, which the game calls high-risk maneuvers since they can be reversed if your opponent enters a throw command first. WrestleMania otherwise keeps it simple, as most special moves are mapped to simple joystick taps or fireball motions. This is a pretty basic approach in comparison to contemporary fighting games, but it's actually more complex than the gameplay typically featured in arcade wrestling games from the late 80s and early 90s. Strategy in these games often boils down to timing and button mashing, like in Technos' WWF WrestleFest. You fail every double face kick we face! Yeah! Other games were even more simplistic. Konami's The Main Event gave each player just one giant action button to mash over the course of each match. So it's admirable that Midway took a different approach for WrestleMania, even if it means that the end result is a little bit less approachable for newcomers, since you need to know a handful of button commands in advance. I guess if you were playing in an arcade, you'd need to read the instructions printed on the cabinet. In general, the tweaks WrestleMania makes to the one-on-one -on -one fighting game formula are well suited to professional wrestling's over-the-top style. Risky maneuvers typically do more damage, which encourages players to bounce off the ropes, leap off of turnbuckles, and generally do the kind of ridiculous stuff that you'd see during actual WrestleMania events. Midway, for its part, tackles the source material with its trademark style, and WrestleMania's larger-than-life presentation is one of its biggest charms. This is a game where Lex Luger literally beats people over the head with a steel mace. Hamhawks fall out of Yokozuna when he takes damage. And The Undertaker throws ghosts at people before finishing them off with a magic tombstone. And yet, none of this feels out of place. I guess professional wrestling is just a natural fit for the kind of otherworldly goofiness featured in Midway Arcade games. But ultimately, WrestleMania's gameplay tells only half the story. As a licensed product, WrestleMania the Arcade Game reflects a crucial era in WWF history. To get a more complete look at the context surrounding WrestleMania's PlayStation debut, I've brought in a local wrestling scholar and self-professed Terry Funk superfan, my partner Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello, Danny. First of all, how would you describe this particular time in WWF history? Uh, I know this is a few years before the Attitude Era, which we saw in Aki's N64 wrestling games. What was going through Vince McMahon's mind at this point? What, what was what was going on? Well, uh, 1995 was right before the start of what would be known as the Monday Night Wars. WWE had ridden on a pretty high horse throughout uh, 83 to about 1993. But then, due to a series of lawsuits that damaged their public image, plus a competing company, WCW, hiring away a lot of their uh, big stars, they were kind of left with a pretty skinny uh, roster that they called the New Generation. So I guess you could say this was like a transitional period for the WWF? Yeah, they were actually about two years away from the Attitude Era and two years um, after the Golden Era of Hulk Hogan and all that. Mm, trapped somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. They were trying to be less silly and be a little more serious, but they were still very, very wacky. This game, WWF the Arcade Game, this game's roster is pretty limited, but I see some names I recognize in there, like The Undertaker, of course, and Shawn Michaels, a couple others. Were any of these guys especially popular when this game was released for the PlayStation in 1995? Well, Bret Hart was very popular, and Shawn Michaels too. They had a really good feud going on that would continue throughout their careers, basically. 
Um, however, Doink, Yokozuna, um, well, some of those guys weren't very popular. Undertaker was very popular, though. Uh, gosh. I actually remember Bam Bam Bigelow was in an, uh, an NES WrestleMania game. Was he popular in 95, or? He was, he was popular because he was all they really had. I mean, they had a lot of other characters who weren't in this, like, uh, Mantar, Half Man, Half Minotaur, um. Oh, cool. Uh, Dumpster Drozzy, a literal, uh, a literal, uh, garbage man. <laughs> a literal garbage man, nice. Yeah, Repo Man, who repossessed your cars. It was a transition from a sillier time to the more serious attitude time, and I think a lot of the characters in the game kind of reflect that. But like a couple of these characters they seem kind of throwaway like i'd never heard of them before after this like in your parlance would you call yokozuna a jobber I, I don't know if i would call yokozuna a jobber but by 95 he definitely he was definitely like well he's the biggest he's one of the only stars we have so we're doing what we can with him some people still remember him. <laughs> but, He's not half man, half minotaur. Right, yeah, he can't match up to that. No. But, uh, but Doink. W what about Doink? Doink? <laughs> is, is he cool? Is he... I don't know. Like, the first thing you see when you start up the game is this clown. Like, <laughs> okay, I've never so... heard of Doink before this game, and yet here he is, front and center. <laughs> Doink was definitely played out by then. Um, Doink was actually pretty... He started out as a heel character, and he was evil. He would, like, s terrify children. But oh, then, he's an evil clown. He was an evil clown with evil distorted music, but then he turned into a good guy. He had a sidekick, Dink, and then he had, um... He had, like, two little uh, sidekicks, and he had another... At one point, there was four of them. There were four Doinks. Four Doinks. Four Doinks. All good, all friends to children. Wow, I never knew that. Yeah. I guess we know now why yeah. Doink is obviously the best wrestler ever. I uh, No, Danny, I, I don't actually think so. Anyway, um, I think we're just about I, done here. We'll wrap <laughs> things up with uh, one final question. Uh -huh. Alex, is wrestling fake? Wrestling's not fake! And there you have it. Thank you, Alex. A few months after WrestleMania hit arcades, it was time for Acclaim to bring the experience home. The PlayStation version of WrestleMania the Arcade game was first out the gate in October of 1995, and ports for the Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, 32X, and DOS PCs shipped a few months later. For whatever reason, the Sega Saturn port was delayed to May of 1996, arriving more than six months after the PlayStation version. All home console ports of WrestleMania, including the PlayStation version, were developed by Sculptured Software. At the time, the studio was also hard at work on the 16-bit versions of Mortal Kombat 3. Porting two arcade blockbusters to half a dozen consoles each evidently took its toll, since as we previously discussed in the Mortal Kombat 3 episode, Sculptured Software's work was serviceable but lacking in many key areas. And while the custom-built PlayStation version of Mortal Kombat 3 was lucky enough to have an in-house development team with Sony's financial backing, WrestleMania unfortunately exhibits all the symptoms of a farmed-out, hastily produced port. Characters are noticeably smaller in the PlayStation adaptation of WrestleMania. They have fewer frames of animation, and you don't hear nearly as much commentary from announcers Jerry Lawler and Vince McMahon. Sculptured Software also removed the background music from the PlayStation and Saturn versions, making matches kind of awkwardly silent. And if you remember how Shang Tsung's morphs in Mortal Kombat 3 brought the PlayStation to its knees, you can expect even worse mid-match load times in WrestleMania's Battle Royal mode. The game stops to load a new wrestler every time you throw an opponent out of the ring, turning what should be a standard endurance mode into something you won't want to endure more than once. Other content was cut completely. The Undertaker actually has a fatality move in the arcade version, which didn't survive the trip to most console ports, including the PlayStation version. So, while Mortal Kombat 3 set new standards for arcade port quality and fidelity on PlayStation, WrestleMania is much more of a typical hack job from an overworked porting team. At least this version includes all eight wrestlers from the arcade game. The Super NES port actually cut Yokozuna and Bam Bam Bigelow from its roster to save on cartridge space. For an arcade game that only has eight characters to begin with, that's pretty bad. Despite the questionable quality of its home console ports, WrestleMania was a hit for acclaim, and the PlayStation version was later reissued in Sony's Greatest Hits packaging. And while Midway never developed an arcade successor to WrestleMania, the game's popularity on consoles led Acclaim to publish its own sequel in 1996, WWF In Your House. This one's 100% sculptured software's work, and it shows. But in the end, WrestleMania's biggest issue was one that it shared with Mortal Kombat 3. 
By late 1995, digitized sprites were starting to look incredibly dated compared to the polygonal graphics featured in breakout fighting games like Virtua Fighter 2 and Tekken, and it wouldn't be long before 3D wrestling games started popping up on PlayStation. Like the WWF itself, console gaming was in the midst of a transitional period in 1995. And for all the hype and hysteria Mortal Kombat stirred up just a few years prior, digitized graphics would soon be dismissed as an evolutionary dead end. A new era was here, and video games and WWF superstars alike had to adapt in order to survive. Shifting away from digitized fighting games for a second, we've got Namco's arena shooter Cyber Sled coming up next on PlayStation Year One. Before that, though, there's a little something I wanted to cover for PlayStation Year Zero. It's time the world learned the truth about... Laughing Policewoman Patchy Slot Hunter? Is that a real game? Alex, are you messing with me? Uh, I guess we'll find out next time. See you then. <laughs>